If you want to know how to turn this 2D drawing into this 3D model, then listen up, bitches, because that's what we're going to do. The concept was created by the legend that is Luigi Lee Corelli, and if you haven't seen his work before, then go check it out, because anyone that gets a shout out from Will Smith is worth checking out. Link below. Since I know you'll ask, the apps I use were ZBrush, Blender and Photoshop and you'll find links to each in the description if you want to find out more about them. The whole process took over 10 hours so this video won't be real time. For that you'll want twitch.tv forward slash dannymac 3 d where I live stream the whole thing. Let's jump in. Our journey begins in ZBrush where we stick to super simple but specific shapes. I like this shape so I mask out a neck and pull it out. Next I use the trim dynamic brush to plane off the sides of the head and the damn standard brush to outline the jaw. For the body I initialize a Q-cube with a resolution of 1 and subdivide it a few times to create a smooth sphere. Now for some basic ear shapes, I have an insert mesh for this and if you want a tutorial on how I did it, check out the link below. I didn't follow the reference 100% with the ears because after trying the graphical shapes in the concept, they didn't translate very well to 3D. Don't think it's cheating to overlay the reference once in a while, but don't rely on it either because unless you're working completely off graphically, it's not going to line up perfectly. I initialize another Q-cube for the shoulders, but keep it really low poly to find the shapes I need. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Now I start the head by marking out a few landmarks and creating a few plane changes. Now I don't have space to explain my entire thought process, but please check out my Gumroad store for a little bit more. I'll have a bunch of new stuff coming soon, so if you follow me there, I can email you to let you know when it's available. At this part of the sculpt, you want to progress nice and slow. Don't try to push any one feature too far. Imagine the character is walking towards you. When they're far away, you can make out the overall form, but you can't see all the features. As they get closer, the features become more and more apparent. If you think about this when you sculpt your characters, you'll avoid overworking a single area. And while I'm keeping an eye on the concept and trying to match the proportions, I'm also looking at human anatomy references on another screen. Stylized anatomy is human anatomy simplified in a graphical direction, so you want to keep that in mind. Here you can see I'm working the area around the eyes and I find that the Orb Cracks brush is particularly good at getting that epicantic fold for the upper eyelid. Now it doesn't ship with ZBrush so I'll leave a link to that below. In a moment you're going to notice that the model looks weird. When this happens to you don't panic. All sculpts go through this. The facial features are starting to look like facial features but they're not working together yet. It's easy to think that the sculpt is failing, so it might be best to have a break, have a coffee or walk the cat or something, anything to rest your eyes. You'll be amazed at how many problems you spot when you come back. Now, I actually use this as an opportunity to retopologize my mesh. Now, it might seem a bit early for retopology because this head is far from finished, but for clean, stylized characters like this, clean topology is your friend. Retopology allows for a low poly base which is really easy to control and avoids that lumpy mesh common to beginner models. If you want to learn more about head retopology I have created a much more detailed tutorial which I'll link below. Now in that tutorial I use 3D Coat but retopology is very much app independent meaning it should be easy for you to translate the information to Blender. I do intend to make a Blender specific tutorial at some point though. Once I'm happy with the topology, I send it back over to ZBrush and start working on it again. Now it's a good idea to make polygroups now so that you can easily hide or mask particular sections of your model as and when you need to. For the eyelashes, I duplicated the whole head, hid everything except this section and deleted hidden. I then use the modeler to model an eyelash shape like so. I like to get these eyelash shapes in early because they do a good job of framing the eyeball and allowing me to find a clean eyelid shape more easily. Next I decide to model the heart by masking an area on the head and extracting it. After Z remeshing I had clean topology to start moulding a shape, though I will manually retopologize this in Blender in a moment. The reason being is again it will give me a nice low poly clean base. Uh, but also be able to model the fold in the hat more easily with clean topology. Was it back over to ZBrush and jobs are good. Un'. 
Next, I poly paint these proxy eyes before moving on to creating the eyebrows in the same way I created the lashes by duplicating the head, then deleting everything but the section I need. Then I can use the modeler to finish it off. Here I mask out an area on the head to extract some hair. The final hair will be modelled with curves in Blender but this shape will help me place them when we get there. In Blender I use path curves with a bevel object to represent stylized hair and I have a tutorial on how to achieve this link below. As you can see I usually start with a simple rectangle as the bevel object or cross section of the hair. Whenever I duplicate a hair strand, I make sure to only move it in edit mode, otherwise I might get issues if I want to combine the hairs into one object later. Now that the hairs are in place, I start editing the bevel object to give the hair strand some visual interest. By splitting the 3D view into two windows, I can edit the shape on the left while checking the result on the right. I then duplicate the bevel object and assign the new one to a few strands. I can now tweak the new object to add variation. Once I was happy with the result, I joined the objects and converted them to meshes to be sent back to ZBrush. I don't always do it like this, but in this case I wanted to see how the hairs would look with polypaint. For the earrings, I created a new Ring 3D tool and played with the initialize settings to get a low poly base. Then I used the Z Modeler brush to further edit the topology and find the shape I was after. I started to polypaint the head but I quickly realised that I had best retopologize and attach the body first. Again, I've got a complete tutorial on how to retopologize the body, link below. Now that's in place, I mask out an area for the shirt and extract one out. A couple of Z remeshes should give us adequate topology for now. Next I model the little jewel on a necklace and again for this I just initialize a Q cube with the resolution of one in each axis followed by a couple of subdivides. For the actual necklace, I created a new Ring 3D tool and tweaked the initialize settings to start with a really low poly ring. Then it's just a matter of using the gizmo and move brush to gently push it into place. Now it's time for some fun in Blender. First I add a ground plane because without it, your model doesn't catch any bounce light and looks a bit unnatural. Next I open up a shader editor and connect a vertex colour node into the base colour slot for each object. This tells Blender to display the polypaint I painted in ZBrush. Next I add in a HDR environment for some global lighting. And I also use this little node trick so that the HDR doesn't show in the viewport but still lights the object. And yes I also have a tutorial on how to do this link below too. For now I just use this one physical light in front of the character. Now it's time to add UVs. Now while I could just stick with the vertex colour, UVs will allow me to create extra maps such as a subsurface colour map and a roughness map. Before I do any arranging I plug a checker texture into the colour which allows me to visualise the texel density. I scale down the scalp because it's going to be covered by hair, so this gives me more space for areas that matter, such as the face. Now it's got UVs, I send the mesh back to ZBrush so I can start painting a roughness map. Well, actually I'm painting a glossy map, which is the inverse of a roughness map, and which I'll invert back in Blender. Now you don't need to do this by any means, it just makes more sense to my brain that the lighter areas are glossy, and the darker areas are rough, so I just work that way. With colour spray enabled on my brush, I give the mesh a once over to give the roughness map some variation. Then I start painting individual areas lighter and darker, like so. I paint the areas I want to be shiny, such as the lips and eyelids, in white, and areas I want to be less shiny, in black. Once I'm done, I generate and export a texture map and bring it into Blender. I never paint the values perfectly, but it's fine because I can add a curves node to tweak the result. For the hat, I imported some fabric textures from polygon.com, but quickly realized that it needs UVs. I do eventually improve these UVs when I add the displacement later, but these work for the time being. Might as well give our shirt UVs while we're at it too. 
I play around with the nod settings until I get a result I like. And don't forget pretty much all of this can be watched in real time on my Twitch channel. Here you can see me deleting parts of the mesh that I don't need. Uh, eventually I'll paint an alpha mat to create that nice fall off uh, right here inside Eevee. For posing I create a really simple head and neck rig. Painting weights is easy in this case since I only need to tilt the head slightly so there's no point making it perfect. Also if I'm left with any issues I can quite easily fix it with my sculpting tools inside Blender. Now you may have noticed that I do still need to close the eye but rather than go through the pain of weight painting eyelids I can use the sculpting tools in either Blender or ZBrush to create a shape key instead. In case you're wondering why I decided to choose ZBrush to do this instead of Blender, it's simply because I'm more familiar with the sculpting tools over there. I have a lot of experience in ZBrush so jobs that take a bit of effort get done there, but Blender is more than capable of doing this. I might as well pose the eyelash while I'm here too. When I'm done, I send the new shape over to Blender and add it as a shape key. I'm noticing at this point that we're missing a tongue so I quickly model a basic shape and add poly paint to it. Easy peasy. Now it's time to add the eye designer eyes which is an add-on I developed for creating and manipulating Disney style eyes really fast. With the tweak of a few sliders I've replaced the eye with a much more detailed iris and subsurface scattering on the whites. If you're interested in trying out this eye for yourself, I've included a link to it below with a discount code. The first 10 sales after this video is released can get hold of the eye at half price. Here you can see me painting the transparency map I mentioned earlier. Basically anywhere I paint black turns transparent, so painting on the model with a brush with a smooth fall off gives it this cool effect. Now I decide it's time to pause the head, followed by some shape key tweaks with the sculpting tools. You see, I do sculpt in Blender sometimes. For the style badge on the hat, I decided to take it straight from the concepts image. Now at first you'll see I literally just add it to a plane and have it sit on the hat, but I decided to improve on this later. The next thing I did, just to push this even further, is paint a subsurface texture for the skin. And you can think of this as being an underlayer for the normal skin texture. And it's quite rare that I go to the effort of painting this, so don't feel like you have to for nice results, but it can help push your results that little bit further. I'm feeling quite good about the model at this point, so I decided to play around with some lighting. I was quite happy with the key light at the front as it shapes the model nicely while giving that nice highlight in the eye. The HDRI acts as a global fill light and to complete the setup I added a couple of blue area lights to act as rim lights around the back. I try a quick render but I'm not happy with the hat logo at the front so it's back to ZBrush to start modelling something a bit better. I'm imagining some sort of sewn on leather badge so after adding the stitching I went back to Photoshop to create an alpha for the text. Then when I'm back in ZBrush I can use the alpha to create an embossed look like so. I bake out the texture and displacement maps and bring them over to Blender and the badge is now looking a lot better but I'm still not quite happy with that hat. To create the stripe effect I added a checker texture and scaled it on the x axis. These lines can now act as a displacement map but those edges are too hard. I wasn't sure how to fix this in Blender so I baked out the result and added a motion blur to make the transition smoother. After a lot of faffing I eventually think it's time to render. After saving out all the passes I think I need I bring them over to Photoshop and start tweaking. And it's amazing how much difference you can make with even just a basic colour correction so don't neglect compositing. If you don't have Photoshop you can download a free alternative such as GIMP or in fact you can do it right inside Blender but again I choose Photoshop because it's powerful and I have a lot of experience with it. And finally we end up with this. Well there we have it. I hope you found something useful in this video and if you did please hit like and subscribe and the cheeky notification bell. 
and don't forget to follow me on gumroad.com forward slash Danny Mark and I'll let you know when new content is available. Peace.